Oh my gosh, look at that. Roger Maris. That I mean, when I was a little girl, <laughs> I mean, you're not as old yeah. as me, but when I was a little girl, that was a big deal. Oh, yeah. I had, think about it? I had 50 on it. Okay. It, it goes for, I forgot, it goes for like 75, 80 <laughs> This is a Mickey Mantle, a little leaf bat. Everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi today. I missed you this week. I so wanted to talk to you. I hope you had a good week. I had a very busy week, which is good. But I wanted to I wanted to talk about something well sort of dramatic that happened to me this week. I walk Desi every night and there is a beautiful house a couple blocks away and they rent to college students. And I ran into this very lovely young student and she was walking her dog. And we sat on her front steps and we talked for quite a while and she had just lost her grandmother. She's only 22 years old and, and she lost her grandmother and she said, I miss her so much. There's so many things that I wish I could have had a chance to ask her. Well, I'm about her grandmother's age. So I said to her, ask me, just ask me some of the questions that you would ask your own grandma and see, and see what you think. And so she did. So I wanted to go through the four questions that she asked me. And then I'd love to hear your, your answers to these questions too. And then I'm going to send her a link to this video. Thank you so much for being here today. Sum up getting older as a woman in three words. And I would say, well, I thought about this and I'm thinking, always a challenge. That's how I look at my life right now. And a challenge is a good thing, not a negative thing to me. A challenge just means that you have to put in a little extra effort to make it wonderful, to make it happy, to make it meaningful. Always a challenge. And that way, my expectations of my life as I live it every day are realistic. There's going to be good days. There's going to be days where I can't think of a word or days maybe I'm not so steady on my feet. Days where I could run for hours. My, my joy becomes boundless. And maybe every once in a while, an old memory will pop into my head and and I'll cry, and that's okay. It's a challenge, and a challenge is a good thing. Living is a good thing, and getting older is such a privilege. And you gotta drink in every moment, right? So those are my three words, always a challenge. The leaves float down the river like little soldiers going off to war ready to fight for what they believe in. And the 
the light hits them just right and the wind carries them, their journey is endless. What is it that older women think about? What are the top three issues that women over 65 think about? Now, I've been on this platform for almost 10 years, so I think I can speak to this a little bit because I read your comments every single week. I mean, we're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of you sharing your life. It's, and it's so wonderful that you do that. But I've narrowed it down to three things that we seem to care about so much. Number one is our identity, our appearance. We want to look our best. You know, my videos on skincare and hair and makeup, they get a lot of views because it's so darn fun and it's a challenge, isn't it? I'm telling you, it is a challenge for me to look in the mirror and have this positive feeling about my body at 69 years old. I think people misunderstand why we ladies talk about our figures and our weight and makeup. It's not about vanity so much as it is, well, number one, health. The more in shape we are, the longer we're gonna live and the better quality of our life. But what about the hair and makeup? What's up with that? The closer we can feel to our womanhood, what we have always known, that we're women. That is our identity. And we don't want to end up looking like, I don't know, Darth Vader when we're older. We, we want to be able to look in the mirror and recognize ourselves and say, yes, I'm the best I can be. Okay, I'm no beauty queen today. And I'm not going to be a beauty queen tomorrow, but you know what? There's nothing I could do that could make me look better than I do right now. And I'm happy with that. I'm proud of the effort that I have put in with my appearance because it's a dang challenge and it's fun. Over the years, over and over again, you talk about financial security. So many of us are on social security or we're working a part-time job over here, another job over there, and getting Social Security. And we're in flux, and a lot of us do not feel financially secure. A lot of us don't know about investing. A lot of us, we just don't seem to be able to save any money. And so you talk about that, and you want me to talk about how I save money. You want to see the spreadsheets that I use every single night to do my budget. So I know where every single penny is, has gone, and is going. And that's important to me. And studying and learning about finance, whether you have, I don't know, $100,000 in the bank, or whether you have $100 in the bank. It all applies. All those little videos on how to save money and how to make Social Security stretch, those are all great videos. And they're uplifting. And, and again, it's a wonderful challenge to see. Okay, last month, I saved $500. How about if this month I saved 501 Or how about... Last month, I saved $5. This month, I'm going to double that. It's all, it's all the same. It's, it's just going in the right direction. After years and years of your comments, you want to talk about living alone. You want to talk about loneliness. You want to know, how do I have this life when there is nobody there to greet me in the morning or kiss me good night what how, how do i how do i do that how do i survive that can i be happy that's what you talk about i every single week i could do a video on how i live alone tips of living alone the truth about living alone and i could have a much bigger channel than i do because that is huge there are so many women that are, are 70 plus 
that are living alone, adjusting to living alone without their husband. And it's rough and it takes time. It took me seven years not to cry every night before I went to bed. Seven years, that's a long time. It doesn't have to take you seven years, but it took me seven years. I'm Italian, I'm dramatic. When you love someone and they die, that love doesn't disappear. That love lives on. Not even death can take all that love away from you. And you carry your loved one inside you and it makes you strong. And it gives them such a legacy, all because of you and your love. This beautiful young girl, she said to me, Sometimes there are people that bring out the very worst in me. And sometimes there's people that bring out the very best in me. Why does that happen? And is it going to be that way for the rest of my life? And I thought that was such a profound question. And I could relate to that very much. There are some people that absolutely bring out the very worst in me. People who are uh, terribly arrogant or, or judgmental. People who, who seem hell-bent in putting me in my place. Telling me to, I don't know, do some research or maybe you should rethink that or... <laughs> do you really, really want to do that at your age? Oh, I hate that one. <laughs> and that brings out the worst in me. There's something about cruelty. There's something about somebody who can't ever say they're sorry. There's, there's something about somebody who never admits that they make a mistake. There's just something about those types of people in my life that bring out the very worst in me. And they don't like me any more than I don't like them. I was working for this automotive company. I was in market research. I worked in a lab and I had my boss over me and he was just saying the dumbest things. <laughs> he was so arrogant. And I just talked right back to him. And one day he looked at me and he said, you are pathetic. Are you ever wrong? Are you ever wrong? Because I'm never wrong. And I said right back to him, if I ever am wrong, I'll let you know. I became him. He brought out the very worst in me. The very, very worst in me. Now, at my age, I recognize that. And I can make a, a little list of, of people who have traits that I find toxic. And so, I, it's like I wish them well. I'm so glad I met you. I hope you have a wonderful life. Please never call me. <laughs> Please don't stop by for lunch because you're toxic and you bring out the worst in me. I learned a long time ago that they say what we hate in other people are the very things that we fear the most in ourselves that we might be like or we might become. And I think there's a shred of truth to that. So what kind of people bring out the very best in you? What kind of people bring out the very best in me? I swear it's people that make me laugh. People that don't take everything so seriously. Now I, you know, I'm kind of a dramatic person. I overthink things. I got a lot of things going on where I can get way too intense. And I love it when I can surround myself with people that will go like, hey, let's dial this down a notch. <laughs> or they'll just, they'll just say something that is so funny. And I have to laugh and I love it. And then we start going. And then I can be funny and then I can start to relax. And that is where I feel those are my best moments in life. When I can shine, when I can smile, when I can laugh, when I can tap into the joy 
of life. You know, I have very loyal haters, I have to say. And they seem to leave a nasty comment for me every week. I delete most of them. I don't know why. Sometimes I just leave them because they make me laugh. Okay, what have I discovered about myself as I have gotten older? I feel like a new me. I do not feel most of the time like that young girl I was in her 20s or 30s. Some of the things that I felt or, or did, I, I can hardly believe it. That's not me at all. As I have gotten older, I have become, well, I've, I've become kinder. I've become more organized. I, I don't blow money. I'm more cautious with my actions and my deeds. I, I feel like I have extra challenges that I have to tackle, that things aren't quite as easy for me as they used to be. I, I have physical things sometimes with arthritis, so that's sort of a challenge for, for me to conquer. There is no doubt, I always felt as I got older, I'd be bored with myself and bored with my life because, hey, I've seen this show before. I know exactly what I'm going to say and do in every given situation. I've lived 70 years almost, and that's just the way it is, and that is not true. You are never going to stay the same. We are just like a river. We just keep flowing. We keep moving. We keep evolving, and we keep changing. I, when I look at life right now, I swear I can feel what other people are feeling. And I know that you know that about me. You tell that to me all the time. When you talk about how you lost your husband or, or you lost your son, you lost your daughter, you lost your mom or your dad. I, sometimes I can feel almost physically sick with grief for you. Everything used to be about me. I could not step outside the circle of myself. But as I have gotten older, what really matters to me is others, how they feel, how they're doing. I would not be here on this platform of YouTube if I didn't feel that somehow, some way, it was important for me to be here because we all feel so invisible and there's nobody to talk to about the things that we go through. Oh yeah, you know, you're just an older woman living alone, so you lost your husband and so you're trying to cope with this or that. Join the club, you know, boring. <laughs> I mean, that's how a lot of us feel. And it's not boring. It's fascinating and it's interesting and we can help each other so much but we don't stay the same we change the thing I love is that I'm more apt to search for a solution now at almost 70 than I ever was at 20 I was like well who cares honey and then I call my husband and then he'd fix the window okay that's not me anymore Every single day is like an eternity. And every, every time I get knocked down and every time I struggle and every time I feel anxious, I think I'm not alone. There are other people out there that feel just like I do. And it comforts me. So how have I changed as I have gotten older? I feel, honestly, it's a new me. It just goes on forever. The river is a mysterious thing. It always keeps moving. <laughs> I mean, you're not as old yeah. as me, but when I was a little girl, that was a big deal. Oh, yeah. I was driving home the other day, and I ran into this huge garage sale. And this wonderful gentleman came out and started talking to me about all the bats that he had for sale and his his baseballs and and we had just the best time chatting and 
his history with baseball was very similar to mine. When I was growing up, baseball was magic. I used to sit there with my grandfather and he'd have three games going on all at once, once on the TV and two going on with the radios. I loved Mickey Mantle and I loved Shoeless Joe Jackson and all the stories my grandfather would tell me about him. But my grandfather always told me that Babe Ruth was the best baseball player that would ever live. He got 714 home runs. <laughs> I heard that about 1,000 times as a kid. But my grandfather also told me that the reason that Babe Ruth was considered the best baseball player that ever lived was because he could do more than one thing and he could do it great. He not only was a great hitter, but he was a great pitcher. Look at life as just one great big baseball game. And if you're down in the ninth, hit that home run. Because I know you got it in you. Sometimes I don't concentrate so well. I drift off into amazing thoughts and I think through everything. Sometimes my body doesn't do what I want it to do. Sometimes I can't think of exactly the right word that I need to make this point or to convey this feeling. One thing that is constant I am so grateful for every minute that I get to live. And I just know in my heart, it's all gonna be all right. Everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I just loved it. If you get a chance down below, maybe maybe answer a couple of the questions I went through today for Diane. I think she would just love it, and you're the best. Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, uh huh, you come back and see me and Desi. Uh huh. We're going to the old baseball game. <laughs> shame for it's one two three strikes you're out in the old bar